So, um, yes. So, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this seminar, uh, which we have the honor to host Orsiek Vievyorovsky, European Data Protection Supervisor, and Frank Ben, who is coming again, uh, one of the most important public servant and manager in Belgium and responsible for contact tracing implement implementation in the country. Um, I am Luca Pinelli, Vice President in Charge of Marketing for ELSA Belgium until tonight and member of the management board of the guidelines on tracing systems uh, in the fight against um, COVID-19 that we issued as ELSA Belgium, the biggest law students and the young lawyers association in Belgium. Um, this webinar takes place as a conclusion of our advocacy project in the context of which we published and sent uh, to the highest authorities of the country the mentioned guidelines. Receiving positive feedbacks from members of the federal parliament, the Flemish government, and the Walloon parliament. Um, so I will now briefly, very briefly, introduce uh, our outstanding speakers. Um, Mr. Wiewiorski is an ELSA alumni. He served both at local and national level in Poland and in the international team as IT director, if I'm not mistaken. Um, after an high-profile career in Poland, he became Assistant European Data Protection Supervisor in 2014, and he was elected European Data Protection Supervisor in December 20, uh, 2019 for a five years long term. And an extensive description of his numerous activities is available on edps.europa.eu. Um, Frank Robin is the founder and manager of the Crossroads Bank for Social Security. In 2007, Frank Robin was again called upon by the Belgian government uh, now to conceive the eHealth platform. And currently, as I said, is responsible for contact tracing implement implementation in Belgium. Again, a more extensive description of his numerous activities is available on frankrobin.be. Um, we would like to thank both of them, of course, for honoring us with their presence. And um, we wish this debate, uh, this video, to be as much as possible a discussion between them. Um, so if Mr. Robin came back, he is not. So I will maybe uh, talk about um, I don't know, uh, what should I talk about? Um, yes. I will maybe, wait, it's loading. Sorry for the inconvenience. I will uh, maybe I let uh, Mr. Vyabarovsky, if he wish so, um, explain us um, the, um, like who is competent for what in uh, in this um, in this framework? Um, if he agrees. Okay. Just maybe uh, I would like to intervene before Luca. Can you add Mr. Robin to the yes, attend sure. to, to the speakers so that you can hear him? And Mr. Robin, once you'll be added, you should be able to turn on mic and. A camera. Once again, we'd like to apologize towards our audience. This was foreseen, and those are the risks of live uh, conferences. I guess, and I hope she will understand. Okay, can you hear me? <clears throat> can you hear me? We do. Perfect. Okay, great. Uh, yes. I don't know if uh, you see also the, the the slide which I put from the uh, presentation. Uh, and is it shared with the other participants as well? Okay, yes, we can that's see. just to explain one uh, important thing, I guess, uh, for, for the beginning of this discussion. Uh, my name is Wojciech Wigorowski, I'm the European Data Protection Supervisor, a former, alum, a former member of the European Law Student Association, and this is mostly why I am taking part in this uh, uh, event uh, uh, instead of the person who is actually responsible for uh, advising the Belgian government uh, uh, in the uh, field of the contract tracing app, which is the Euro which is the data protection authority of Belgium, each of the data each of the jurisdictions uh, in the European Union have its own data protection authority, 
and the European Data Protection Supervisor is not in any sense hierarchically over them. I'm responsible for the supervision of the EU institutions, bodies and, and, uh, uh, and agencies, and also for advising in the legal process. I'm also the member of the European Data Protection Board, which consists of all the data protection authorities from all over Europe. And uh, the, the, the thing which I will uh, try to stress the most today is the need for the cooperation and interoperability between the solutions uh, which are established in different uh, countries. But of course, I will also pass uh, the information on how the data protection authorities, including the Belgian Data Protection Authority, look at the problem of the contract tracing apps where, when, uh, as I said, contract tracing apps are at the moment created on the national level and they may differ from country to country. Thank you very much, Mr. Vyavyorovsky. Maybe we can make a try if uh, we hear Mr. Robin. Yes, can you hear me now? Mr. Robin? Does it work? Yes, it's perfect. Okay, Yes. yes. fine. It's perfect. Um, I introduced you, but maybe if you want just to tell... No, no, no. no. I, I heard the introduction. It was okay. No problem. <laughs> Let's start the context. Okay. The thank context, you very yes. much. Thank you very much. And thank you again to both for your presence here. So uh, let us start with the questions. And with the first one, um, we, we know that uh, training systems only work if the people have full trust in them in order to use, comply with them spontaneously. Therefore, our first question would be, how can we build trust? And it's the name of uh, the webinar actually, in tracing system amongst the population. Uh, let's start with um, Mr. Vyavyorovsky and then we will come back to you, Mr. Robin. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm, I may say that uh, if uh, the governments who are usually responsible for preparation of such a system start to work on that uh, with the, uh, the just at the time when they want to create the applications it's already too late because the trust is not built at the time when the uh, application itself is prepared but it's a kind of result of what happened uh, in the months and years before so we may say that the first important feature to be taken into consideration is the general trust of the people to the government in these countries. And of course, it differs from country to country. There are countries uh, where, by, kind of, we may say, by default, people trust the government more, like Scandinavian countries. There are the countries where, where, where the people are always very critical towards the, the government, like the countries of Southern Europe. Uh, but uh, of course, these are also simplifications. What is extremely important uh, when you try to build the application that should be downloaded by the people and used on the mobile apps, I think the most important thing here for, for the governments and for anybody who prepared the, the, the applications like that is to be transparent what you do. Transparent what are your purposes, what are you creating this application for, what will you use so which kind of data are collected by the, uh, by, by the uh, device, it's by, by the application itself, which of them stay on the device, which of them are transferred to any uh, organization, entity that is involved in the whole project. And what is going on with this? How is it processed? So very uh, early in the stage, it started to be an important to find out if this is an open uh, source application or if it's not an open source of application, what kind of information about the processing of the data are collected. And the worst thing that may happen if you think about the trust is any situation where it's found that either the government or the developers of the, of the application did not inform about any kind of uh, uh, any kind of uh, processing that is done, what uh, started to be important when we started to uh, to use these applications all over Europe was also the way it is presented in the mass media. So you can win a lot and you can lose a lot by the simply PR work on the applications. 
Thank you, Mr. Vievyorovsky, for your answer. And so now we will pass the floor to Mr. Robin for his o answer. Okay, so um, you can do contact tracing uh, according to several methods. You, ha you can have kind of manual contact tracing where when a person is infected, uh, you call him and you ask about a lot of, of uh, whereabouts, where he has been and, and, and so on. Uh, because the important thing is that you can uh, contact quickly the people who have been in contact with this person. The manual system is a quite privacy invasive system because you have to give a lot of information. Uh, a good app, contact tracing app, is less privacy invasive um, because it can be done it's called you have several kind of 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 methods for a contact tracing app uh, but there is one that is called dp3t so uh, um, decentralized proximity privacy uh, protection proximity tracing where you can install the app on your smartphone the the app generates senseless tokens and send it and another one who has the same app can store the senseless tokens on his uh, smartphone these senseless tokens don't uh, have any information about who is the uh, one who has the smartphone nor where uh, you are and at the moment that uh, uh, there is a person that has been infected, he can publish his central tokens to a central log server. And so the other people that have the senseless, senseless token uh, on his uh, on their smartphone can check whether they have been in contact. So this is a system that permits to trace contacts without any uh, personal data um, i wonder why the european commission didn't propose this kind of app for the whole Euro european union it would be <laughs> would have been much better because now every country uh, has to implement it you have problems with international interoperability uh, you have several types of um, of protocols so in, for instance in france it's another protocol it's a more centralized protocol um, and there are problems with interoperability uh, but i think that that is very important we have the the right uh, on health to have health and healthcare on the one hand we have the right to data protection on the other hand it has to be a balance and it is perfectly possible to have a, an ict solution an app that respects both of them as i as i explained and of course it should be an app as i agree uh, it, has, it has to be or the apps are open source apps you need security audits you need transparency uh, but again uh, i wonder why there was not the ability to have a quick european solution for the whole european union based on the recommendations also that uh, gave the european data protection board but i, I think uh, it's perfectly possible and the apps that have been installed in in, in germany in ireland in estonia um, in belgium now in ireland uh, and so on in italy they are all respecting this uh, privacy uh, uh, protection uh, system and again it can be done uh, you you can you ha can have information that you have been in contact with uh, an infected person but you don't know who and you don't know where okay lucas if you allow me to jump in at this moment and to, to uh, and probably try to to maybe not answer but give a little bit of hints why the commission did not do this uh, this, this work? I have to say that I was myself uh, very much involved in the uh, call for the all European solution as far as the apps are concerned. We called at least to organize a framework of interoperability between the uh, applications, but also calling to have the, the one European solution. 
And uh, of course, if you live in Luxembourg, you know how important it is uh, uh, to, to uh, have uh, something which will work both in Belgium, in Germany, and in your home, uh, Luxembourg. Me, being the Polish uh, citizen who works in Bu uh, Brussels, uh, uh, I have to use applications of both of these countries when I travel, which stop making sense once again if they are not interoperable. But why the Commission didn't propose uh, the things like that? Well, first of all, the applications anyway are uh, only the tool for the uh, for the well for the health system uh, that is on the ground. This is not the silver bullet which uh, solves the problem. This is something which helps in the normal process of contract tracing that is going on in the countries. And we have to answer to ourselves that both the uh, the uh, telecommunication and uh, the health are regulated on the national level, and especially health. You know that in some of the countries, this is not even the national level, but this is the level of provinces on which the decisions about the healthcare system is cre are created. So having a situation where the, 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 the player from the governmental side is the agency responsible for health in, this, in, the, in the country makes it extremely difficult uh, to uh, create the system which will work the same all over Europe. And even the problem that was uh, that was uh, uh, mentioned by our interlocutor that uh, the French chose another solution and another protocol to be the basis uh, for their uh, 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 for the solution shows very well that it was not an easy thing at the beginning to find out what actually the answer will be. Uh, late in uh, in in the April. Uh, the European Data Protection Board has passed its uh, guidelines uh, on uh, the, the contract tracing apps. And even these guidelines didn't say which protocol should be in use, saying that both the centralized ones and the decentralized ones may serve the purpose. So it was not an easy thing to answer the, the question at the very beginning. But the pro, the, the, the pro of the fact that we are 27 countries uh, in the EU is that right now we tried at least 15 different solutions all over Europe. If this is true, that the second and the third wave of COVID is going to come, I think there's a very good moment to check which solution was really helpful and which solutions was really uh, finding the purpose. And then to create at least the framework under which the data can be collected in the, the, in the, the application prepared by country A, like Belgium, for example, but reused by those who are dealing with the, with the, with the, uh, uh, with the problem in the Netherlands, Poland, uh, uh, Hungary, Estonia, and etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Because, as, as, as you said, uh, Mr. Robin, a while ago, uh, most of these countries use the, the, the solution which by default is uh, serving the privacy and serving the data, data protection. And let me uh, uh, finish the, the, the short intervention with the example of what's going on in Belgium at the moment, as far as the contract tracing is concerned. Those of you who were in the restaurants or in the pubs last few days uh, found out that there are the lists of the guests uh, that are organized by the by those who are uh, managers of the restaurants or, resta or the managers of the pubs. And in some of the restaurants, you actually can find the telephone numbers of all the guests and the names of all the guests being presented to you when you are entering the restaurant. Yeah. While in the others, it's done in the way which is preser preserving the, the privacy. You can see how difficult it is to deal with it even inside the country in the normal uh, uh, contact tracing. So uh, we are we, we somehow collecting the, the uh, experiences that we may be able to use in the nearest future. Thank you. Okay. I guess Mr. Robin wants to answer. No, 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 no. I, I think uh, you're right. It's not. Uh, it's not simple. It's not easy. But in times of crisis, uh, you need leadership. You need integration. And I would welcome uh, a more global approach. Um, and, and if we can help to do that, OK. But uh, again, uh, we don't uh, disagree on what kind of app we should use. <laughs> we agree that it should be 
the solution that is the, the less privacy invasive and there is a solution that can be uh, used, as I told you, without uh, uh, treating personal data. Okay, thank you. Uh, to follow up maybe on this last part, um, do you think, um, both of you, that uh, a combination of manual tracing and tracing app um, is, would be the most efficient way to counter the spread of COVID-19? And would such combination be necessary and proportionate? Uh, we can start with Mr. With Mr. Robin, sorry, and then come back to Mr. Gibber. Yes, of case, of course, in my opinion, not everyone will. So, so um, every country, I think, um, uh, indicates that uh, the installation of an app is on a voluntary basis. Uh, so we will not have a coverage of 100%. People don't. Some people don't have smartphones. Some people don't want to install the app. So it doesn't make sense to only uh, rely on an um, on an app. Uh, and it is uh, <coughs> a combination that you need between. Uh, the tracing, uh, contact tracing via an app and the manual tracing. And for the manual tracing, again, uh, we also need to take into account, otherwise people will not trust it, uh, the, the right on, on data protection. So we try to, to, it has to be effective, it has to be quick, it, was, it has to be complete because uh, you have a spread of the of the virus if you don't uh, are very quick and very complete on the context the high risk context of an infected person um but we don't need to ask for inf more information than that is needed uh, the 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 most difficult thing is to have analysis of what we call clusters where where people are together in an uh, organized or a less organized uh situation and where you need to have an indication about who has been uh, at the cluster, who could be infected. It can be a reception of a, of a marriage, it can be a, uh, a bar or, or a restaurant, it, it, it can be a museum, it can be a sauna. Um, and that's the most difficult thing because you have to ask people where they have been to contact those who have been organizing these events. Um, you don't need to to uh, have all the information about the contacts before. You only need it when, when there has been a contact, when there has been a, a marriage with an infected person and, and so on. Uh, but this is a, a very difficult uh, thing because it's not about IT, it's about human contacts and, and, and uh, uh, calling someone uh, to get information about where he has been and, and with whom he has been in contact is a very, a very time uh, consuming and um, uh, psychological, diffi uh, psychologically difficult uh, situation. But you need both of them. It, it doesn't make sense to only rely on the uh, electronic uh, app. Thank you. Yes, it, indeed, uh, the, the applications, as I said, are not the silver bullets. They are not solving the problem. Uh, they are just helping in the activities that are normally taken by the uh, by the uh, authorities and uh, uh, by the people who are responsible for fighting with the crisis and fighting with the epidemic. Well, the best organized, the most popular, and the most effective uh, the, uh, applications would not serve any purpose if there was no testing and uh, no possibility. To, uh, uh, to get the help from the well-working health system. So definitely health service uh, in the country and the possibility to get the tests and to be tested is the conditions in the Quanon to talk about the uh, application as being one of the tools to be used. Because the mere fact that you know that you've been in the contact with the person who was in fact it does not give you any advantage or disadvantage in the, in the in the society. You just have to know what to do further. Moreover, the matter of fact that you had this contact may be the stress factor for you. So only if you know how to get the information, how to get the the, the another guidance for you in the situation when you had this kind of contact, may help to fight with the with the virus. So. Uh, this is a tool, not a silver bullet. That's the the, the first thing. Uh, 
As Mr. Robbins said, one of the most important challenge is that uh, we will never reach the situation where all the people in the street will have a device which will be using the application in the right way. First of all, not all the people have the smartphones that are devised to, to that. In my closest family, there are six persons, and only two of them have a smartphone that potentially may have the application like that on. Two others do not use the smartphones, but use the older mobile phones because they use them only for communication and uh, for, for telecommunication, but not, not for uh, anything else. And uh, two other are the children which do not have an access to the smartphones. So uh, we will never use, we will never reach 100%. Moreover, even if you have a smartphone and even if you downloaded the application, you must, you must uh, pass some other requirements in order to have it well working. For example, mo most of the smartphones, the Bluetooth low energy uh, system will not work. The applications based on that will not work if your mobile phone uh, has a battery which is less than 20% charged. So you can use, the, the, you can look all the people who are here in the room at your own smartphone and to find out if your battery is good enough to even take to, to, to take this application to the normal operation. Then, of course, you have to have the, in, the, uh, the operational system, which is updated. So you had to install the last version of the, of the system. And finally, we have this famous problem of the interoperability between the uh, between uh, uh, Android and uh, and uh, um, Apple solutions in this field, as you know, Google and Apple try to try to find a uh, fight with it. Moreover, the answer that you've been in the close uh, uh, contact with the uh, with the person who was infected is not necessarily one hundred percent true, and this is uh, uh, this is something that the developers of the system are fully aware of. Because if I sit right now here in this room and uh, just over the wall, which is here, there is a person who has the telephone and who has been infected. My uh, telephone can find out that I was in the pro pro close proximity with this person, or the, despite the fact that there is a wall or the window which is uh, dividing us. Moreover, uh, this says where my telephone was. Of course, telephone is a very private thing. There are more people now uh, in the world who sleep with their telephone than the people who sleep with their uh, sexual partners. So uh, we may say that it's a very intimate thing uh, uh, that, that we have. But if I leave it here and I go downstairs to the uh, underground parking to my car, I'm not in the place where my telephone is, and that's my telephone who is co collecting the, the tokens. So as I said, this is a very good tool as far as we know that there are some limitations, that we know that this is a tool, not the silver bullet, and we know what we are using the data for. My fellow Data Protection Authority from Norway found out just a few days ago uh, that uh, the, the, the Norwegian authorities who are collecting the data already from April have not used it for any purpose so far. Simply, there were some pilot projects that were done with this data, but there was no system of real uh, contact tracing, despite the fact that the system has been uh, the, the system is collecting the data already from April, and the fact that the data should be deleted after 30 days does not appear neither in the technical solutions nor in the legal solutions in Norway. Um. Precisely um, about the technical measures, um, in such a context of high-scale data processing, um, securization is key. And so what would be the necessary organi organizational and technical measures to be taken to ascertain the security of the data processed in this context? Uh, we can go with Mr. Robin first. Uh... Apply to the app or apply it to the general situation of tracing? Uh, apply to the, to the app? Situation. Yes, okay. Um, again, um, <clears throat> you have the, the 
it doesn't make sense to collect data and to treat personal data is it if it is not needed and it is not effective okay but so it, it has to be proportional for the purposes of contact tracing again what are the purposes if a person uh, has been infected i need to know as quick as possible who are the con con the people that have been in contact in a high risk contact with the infected person i need to know all of them uh, it has to be complete it has to be correct uh, and it has to be trustworthy if 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 uh, people don't have trust in trust in the system they will not not give uh, the data and uh, uh, in the end we also need to be able to identify contamination or propagation clusters so where people come together we, we have to check that they don't have been um, um, <clears throat> infecting uh, each each other so these are the the key performance indicators for a contact tracing system so now on data protection of course you don't need data that you uh, don't uh, need for for these purposes so what we try to do is to have um, uh, only the, the 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 needed information we only store it for a uh, very um, uh, very limited uh, period because you don't need to have information on context uh, longer than than 21 days or 14 days it depends on on, on, on what is the view uh, we don't need to have a lot of um, uh, health data we only need data about symptoms to evaluate whether the persons are, uh, will the people have have symptoms or don't have symptoms? Um, we are getting the because it has to be quick. We are getting the information about the test results directly from the labs. So it's uh, the labs that uh, are executing tests and the medical doctors that uh, give information on the situation of the person because some persons don't want to be tested or can cannot be tested. This data is put in a, in a central system um, that is well, um, well secured. The contact tracers don't have access to the central system. They only get call orders. So they only get the indication, we have to contact these persons to, uh, to put some questions. Um, and they don't have access to, to the whole database. And again, um, when the data are not needed anymore, uh, after 20, 21 days, the data are um, destructed, are not uh, dealt with uh, anymore. But it doesn't make sense neither not to have the data you need to have an effective, uh, an effective um, uh, contact tracing system. Uh, so so you have, it has to be a balance between what is needed and how do you secure it. Yes, thank you, Mr. Wiewerowski. I guess there is nothing to add to what, what Mr. Robin said. Uh, we, we, we may uh, m say that uh, the data protection law that exists in Europe at the moment uh, uh, fully envisages the situation like that. So this is not anything which is in breach or, or exemption from the data protection rules. No, it's ex ex exactly what the data protection law says about the possibility to, put, to, to uh, use the data for the certain purposes. And uh, uh, of course, the data should be limited to the, the, to, to the smallest uh, possible amount, but it does not mean that you cannot uh, uh, localize the person, for example. You can, if you know what, what are you doing it for. Uh, it, it even does not say that you are not allowed to, to, to make more, to, to give more information about the, uh, 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 about the contact that, that happened in most of the countries, I think in all the countries at the moment, uh, uh, it, the, the person does not get uh, the information at what time exactly the contact happened. Yeah? So this information is not passed. In my personal opinion, this is one of the information that can be passed to the person. And it may help the person to assess uh, in which situation it happened. And the possibility of recognizing the person who was the infected one that you had the contact with, is anyway quite small, or if it, it, if it exists, uh, it does not uh, uh, disturb the, 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 the social contacts of the persons. 
but while at the same time it may show us these moments like as i said a few, few minutes ago when you actually could not have a contact with the person who was infected because you were for example divided by the walls divided by the windows so it may redu reduce the, the the possibility but moreover it may tell me that this is not only me who had the contact so if i if i get the information for example today that i had the contact with the person who was infected i don't know if it would happen at the time when i was there with my daughter or without her was she also in contact with the infected person that i cannot find out uh, other way than either by using her telephone she doesn't have a telephone or to find out what time it happened so there might be even some uh, so, some developments in, in in the direction of having more information but of course as i said uh, that there's uh, the, this is only the part of the story the rest is the uh, organization uh, and the awareness of, of the people who are managing with the, the data and just let me uh, once again recall the example of the Belgian bars uh, and Belgian pubs, Belgian restaurants uh, that uh, are collecting the data about the, the guests at the moment uh, and some of them doing it in the way that they are actually giving this data to all the other persons in the, in the, in the restaurant uh, for free so I just can make a picture of all, of all the telephone numbers of the people who are in the bar together with me. Yes, I can add that in Belgium we also have a, a quite uh, specific and very precise legal framework. Eh? So the databases that are being used are well described, the purposes are well described, the data controllers are well described, the people who, have, who can get access to what data are well described, we have uh, taken into account uh, a number of specific situations. Let's say that a, a psychiatrist or a medical doctor has been infected. Okay, we will ask him if he wants to um, contact his contacts themselves or whether he wants to give it to the contact center. But we, we, we make it possible that a medical doctor, that a lawyer, don't have to uh, reveal or not has to, to respect its professional secrecy. He can keep it if he uh, informs his contacts by himself or by herself. So these are types of, of, of that's a proportionality principle. Eh? You only need the data that are needed if you can have another way to have the same effectiveness. Don't ask for the data. Uh, uh, we don't ask for the data about whom has been in a, in a bar or in a pub uh, before uh, the moment that there has been someone who has been infected. And only then we ask what other people were at the same place at the same moment in a high risk contact, eh? in, a, in a situation where, we, where there were more than a quarter of an hour in the same place and at, at less than 1.5 uh, meter. So this uh, this has to be a kind of, of embedded uh, uh, way of, of thinking and it has to be respected by all contact tracers Other, otherwise people will not, will not trust the system and it has been laid down in a very specific legal framework in Belgium. Sometimes it's a problem because then we, have, we want to evolve but okay that's the, the price you pay for, for a transparency. Yeah? Yes, thank you. About that point, um, in Belgium, in, in this uh, context, we have heard from time to time, and I think next week uh, again, um, the Data Protection Authority complaining about the lack of consultation or information transmitted uh, when consulted. Uh, what is the, the concrete role a DPA should have in the implementation of tracing systems? And we will start with Mr. Vyabrovsky and then come back to you, Mr. Robin, if you will. Well, it partly depends on the country and the kind of tradition that you have in the country. But we understand that it makes sense to ask how the solution may look like <coughs> to the persons who are the most uh, experienced in it. And definitely the, the data protection authorities might be the good uh, addressee. Although, for example, in Belgium, I know that some of the developers, because there were several systems which were uh, prepared in different places uh, and uh, uh, before the government chose the one uh, to be used, uh, 
uh, part of these de developers were in permanent contact with the, either the academic centers or the former members of the Data Protection Authority in Belgium, for, former commissions of the, uh, of the Belgian uh, Data Protection Authorities, uh, in order to have this specialist uh, involved in. And there are the countries where this cooperation was very close. That was uh, the case in France, that was the case in Ireland, that was the case in UK, uh, partly in Germany as well. But there were the countries which were fully, uh, fully, uh, which are fully democratic uh, and which had a very good experts, but not from the Data Protection Authority. Uh, and this contact with the Data Protection Authority was not uh, very frequent, like in Austria, for example. Uh, but, uh, of course, there were also the countries where the data protection authorities were completely ignored in the process of preparing that. I will just tell you about the kind of paradox that we found out uh, in some of the countries. There were the countries where the data protection authorities were involved in the preparation of the system. And later on, when the system was created uh, and it was deployed on the market, uh, they've been accused of not being independent anymore in, in assessing the system. And I, I, I'm not going to name the country, but there was the country where the members of the parliament said, we don't want to talk about with, with the Data Protection Authority about it anymore, because she was involved in the preparation of the system. So if we have, the, 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 we, if we have concerns about that, we cannot address these concerns to the Data Protection Authority. They are not independent, they are not uh, impartial anymore. That was a kind of paradox. We didn't expect something like that from, from, from the members of the parliament, but there is also something in it. Some people say you cannot assess, you cannot supervise the system that you were preparing yourself together with the government. Yeah. So uh, I'm, I'm not saying that the data protection authority shall be involved in each and every activity in preparation of the, uh, of the application like that. But on the other hand, I know the very good examples of, of the uh, of the work which was very practical in this sense, even if, unfortunately, it led to, the, to, to stopping the, the development of, the, of some of the applications. You probably know that the Dutch authority, the, the authority of the Netherlands, uh, have actually uh, said no to seven uh, uh, the consecutive proposals of applications given to the, the, to the Dutch market. And the Norwegian authority, by the way, absolutely, uh, absolutely um, uh, in the right way, has stopped the activity of the application in Norway because of the concerns they had about the, the way it was created. Thank you, hey. Mr. Robin. Yes, it's a, a little bit a difficult question for me because Perhaps, as you know, I am a member of the Belgian Privacy Commission for 30 years now. Of course, I cannot um, uh, participate when there are decisions that are made concerning uh, uh, things that I've been developing. Okay, so I, so, so you in the Belgian Data Protection Authority, uh, you have several, uh, you have five uh, full-time people. I'm not one of the full-time people, but the advice on regulation is given what you call a knowledge uh, center with six people and there is one meeting uh, a month. Of course, because I've been working at this system, I could not participate for reasons of independence uh, of, of the knowledge center when uh, the deliberation was given related to this, uh, to this uh, regulation. But um, um, before the GDPR, I, I, uh, there was a much more uh, involvement of the Privacy Commission, uh, it's like the previous speaker said, in uh, crisis situations to work out uh, systems together and to, to have a preventive um, way of working. Today, with the GDPR, um, it is very difficult because the uh, data protection authority has to have a, a high level of independency and it uh, makes it difficult to participate previously to the elaboration uh, of, of regulation. And in crisis situations, I think it is necessary. It doesn't make sense to have a situation where you have a, a number of people 
it, again, it's, bit, it's a balance between fundamental rights. Eh? You have the fundamental right on data protection, but you also have the fundamental right on health and on, on, on uh, social protection. And you have to find a balance. And then you have to make a risk assessment. And you don't have to, to take the, the negative risks, but you have to get the added value uh, that is needed from those systems. And I think the GDPR should be changed in that respect. There will be an evaluation so that uh, in some situations it is possible that the data protection authority without having problems with their independency could be involved in the elaboration of the balance between these fundamental rights. And it's not only a legal discussion. It's a multidisciplinary discussion. So we need privacy, uh, 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 so data protection authorities uh, that are not only composed uh, of lawyers, but also of IT people, of information security people, uh, because again, you have to not to take the risks, uh, but 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 to have the added value. And if you don't do it in a multidisciplinary way, it will not work. And one of the problems we had is that those people like me, uh, who normally uh, are in this uh, knowledge center and have a more uh, ICT uh, background, uh, were not uh, in the deliberation because they were um, uh, they have been working at the regulation. Uh, on which uh, a decision, a deliberation had to be made. It was the same with Professor Bert Prenel, who is also a member of, of this Knowledge Center, uh, but he has been developing the DP3T protocol, so he could not assist. Um, and, and that makes it possible. And I think we should have the possibility without that there is a problem of independency. Uh, it's it's better to, to, to have a situation when you have... Uh, uh, possibly um, uh, profound information security issues and you, where you have to make this balance that the people that uh, have to deal with data protection can help to work out this balance uh, rather than to be only available afterwards to give an advice. And I think this should be one of the the things that should be changed um, when there is an uh, an, uh, an evaluation of the GDPR. Another, another thing is how precise, what is the degree of precision that you put in a formal law? Um, we are, for instance, um, let's take the example of, of the people that are coming back to Belgium now from, uh, from regions, uh, red regions as we call it, so regions where there is a high level of infection. We need to get some information about that. This has not been foreseen, two months ago in all these details because the system was not uh, put in place already. And now we, we face the problem that uh, because we made a formal law that some uh, evaluations are not possible, seem not possible because the law doesn't. Uh, so, so you need a situation where the, the, the main uh, principles, the purposes, the categories of data, the people who have access to the data, the 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 uh, the period that you that you keep the data, uh, the, the information security measures are put in a formal law, but you should be able to uh, execute the law and to precise the law by um, uh, by oral decrees or by by, by decisions that, that can be made quickly. And in my opinion, with an involvement involvement and a good uh, cooperation with the, the data protection authorities. Thank you, Mr. Robin. Mr. Vievirovsky, would you like to add something to that's been said? Well, like actually, I already explained before the, the, the position of the data protection authorities. Uh, if I can add to this last point that was taken by Mr. Robin about the, the precision of the law, I have no um, possibility to assess the Belgian law. This is not the role of the European data protection supervisor to say how the Belgian laws sh should be written. So this is the question to, to Mr. Stevens, uh, the, the Belgian Data Protection Authority, all the persons with the, with the long, uh, uh, long uh, experience uh, in assessing the, these things in the country. I can tell it, it differs from country to country. There are the countries which require 
very precise information to be put into the law which is passed by the parliament, that is partly by my country of origin, for example. Uh, but also there are the countries where this room for maneuver is quite big. And just without assessing is it good or bad, uh, let me give an example from Belgium. If you look at the uh, person, uh, personal, uh, sorry, passenger, num uh, passenger num uh, numbers, uh, uh, well, once again, uh, PNR, passenger num uh, name record. Personal name, yeah. yes. Yes, uh, passenger name record. That's the, yes. that's the, that's the uh, full notion. If you look at these solutions, uh, the Belgian solution on the level of the statute is very general. It's very general. There's a lot of things which are given uh, to the royal decree to be to be assessed uh, and to be uh, explained, including the decision if this is only for the airline transport or also for the maritime transport and the railway transport. So the, it can be done in the royal de decree. So this is something which, which which could not pass the constitutional test in the other country. So you cannot uh, this, uh, the, the, the say how precise the law should be generally in Europe, uh, but you definitely have to do it on the level of the of the uh, member state, on the level of the country. And uh, once again, absolutely agree with Mr. Robin that uh, after the crisis or even in or even during that, uh, we should start to assess the effectiveness and efficiency of the tools that we used so far. So uh, this is not enough to say theoretically how it should look like. We should look practically how it worked. I would not agree that we have to change GDPR. I don't think there is a need to change GDPR, but probably the changes on the level of the, uh, of the national solutions might be required and might be, might, might be useful. Thank you. Um, to yeah, um, to come back to what uh, you have said, Mr. Vyavirovsky, with the uh, Dutch authority um, uh, not accepting some apps, um, do you think that um, one on one and only app should be uh, used in every country? So one different, but in every country, but only one by country, or do you think uh, many apps? should be um, allowed as long as they are interoperable and if uh, many apps can be used, um, what do you think about maybe a label to uh, ensure that there is an interoperability amongst them? You actually test my uh, general ideological look to the world. Uh, because I generally would love to answer, oh, there should be many applications and the kind of competition between these applications in order to find the best solution which may exist in the country. But if I should say the same thing about the medical system in the country and the health production system in the country, saying, oh, there should be the competition between the hospitals in the country, one giving uh, one uh, decision and the other giving the other decision and we will see who will survive, that's not exactly what you would expect from somebody who has the reasonable way of thinking. So I may say I understand that there is one application which is chosen by the country and which is promoted by the public authorities in order to collect the information. But I agree with it, with such, an, uh, such a solution only then when we know that we are assessing how the application works we made it open in the meaning that we transparently can see how it works. We can easily find out who has done which part and what is the most important, who is processing the data which is going out of this application. And we have quite an open way of assessing if the application is all right. I, I may have a lot of doubts uh, and concerns about the organization of the state in Singapore. But I have to say <clears throat> that what they did with the contract tracing app, they, they prepared the first one, is something that we should look at. Because they have created the system which is transparent and open. <clears throat> they gave it for testing for everybody around. When they found any kind of mistake, any find any uh, uh, inefficiency in the system, 
It has been openly said that it exists, and it has been openly said how it will be solved. So in this sense, that was a very good approach. And I guess this is also what German government did, and which I liked very much. And it has shown that even the country where there are very strong pro-privacy movements, very strong groups of uh, people having a lot of doubts about the government, the governmental application can be popular in comparison with the other countries of Europe because it's open, transparent, and everybody around can test how it works. So in this sense, that was a good, uh, that was a good, uh, um, uh, good experience. But uh, yes, I, I believe that the, la the least application we have, the better it is uh, for the system uh, uh, all over Europe. And uh, I don't think that this is the right uh, idea that I have uh, 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 five Belgian applications when I'm in Brussels and seven, Belg seven Polish applications when I'm in Poland. Plus, I'm adding to that uh, uh, 16 German applications from each land of Germany uh, only because I'm traveling by car from Brussels to, to my hometown in Dansk. Thank you, Mr. Robin. Yes, I agree. Yeah. Eh? In the beginning, I uh, said that I would have preferred one app for the whole of Europe. So uh, I think it is better to have uh, uh, one app per country uh, and even uh, between countries. In Belgium, we are reusing the, the open source code of the German app. Um, um, the ef why? The effectiveness, the effectiveness of an app depends on the degree of uptake. Eh? That, that's one. Uh, so if you have several apps, you need to have interoperability and, and, and so on. It's not easy. Second problem, um, if you, uh, there is a cost, of course, but there is also a risk. When you have several apps, it's not so easy to guarantee that there are no possible uh, information security problems with an app. Um, so if you have several apps uh, for a country, if there is one that has an information security problem, you can have the loss of confidence in all the other apps, even if they don't have the same information security problem. So uh, that's that's a risk. So that's why, uh, at least in a, in a little country such as Belgium, we chose for, for one app and based on the same uh, protocol that has been used, as I told you, in Germany, in Ireland, in Italy, in the Netherlands, uh, and so on. And uh, we have a multi-tier implementation. So we have the Google and Apple uh, exposure notification API. Above, we have the TP3T protocol, and then we have a user interface. And uh, that's the best way, I think, to, to have interoperability. Thank you. It's, it's um, also I, I can add so that in the that you in of tracing apps now. Um, yes, sure. No, no. I, what I would like to say also is, uh, um, I I told you that that the, the the protocol that the most countries are using is a protocol that is based on uh, exchange of anonymous data. Other countries uh, have been developing systems with uh, location tracking. That, that they that they look where you are and so on. We don't want this kind of, of tools, and that's why there is also because people do not have confidence that it is not needed. Uh, that's why also we we created a legal environment, a legal framework, to be sure that the only app is based on this privacy uh, decentralized pri proximity tracing privacy preserving protocol. But, but to be to be absolutely uh, frank, uh, there is no solution in Europe which is based on location and which is used for the purpose of the contact tracing. Iceland. There have been some solutions like that. Yeah, but uh, Iceland's uh, solution... It's not a European Union, I know, but Iceland is a European country. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, that's true. That's true. Yes. But the Iceland solution is slightly different thing. That's not that much contract tracing, uh, but at the same time, quarantine tra tracing. So it's... it's yes, yes, uh, I know. Uh, but uh, but you are right. The dual there was systems like that, like uh, Israeli, for example, Israeli one. Yes. And uh, there are some there are some features which are sometimes additional ones, like in Norwegian uh, data protection, uh, yes. in, the, in yes. Norwegian uh, contact tracing uh, application, where location is the additional feature. And uh, by the way, 
it should be uh, by consent and it should be uh, it should be option but unfortunately in the first release of the application it was by default turned on which also was questioned by the data protection authority okay Okay, Lucas, you are frozen on my um, screen. So, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, is it okay now? Yes, yes, yes. It's because we were talking about Iceland, probably. <laughs> is it okay? Okay. Yes, Thank yes. you very much. Yeah. <laughs> and that's why. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and thank you. And um, I will address the uh, the participants now. You see that our speakers are so outstanding that they answer the question I was about to ask. Um, so uh, thank you for that. And um, I will maybe ask you um, a last um, comment um, on our discussion, and then we will open the floor uh, for questions from the audience. Um, so, Mr. Robin, if you want to, to conclude uh, your intervention before the questions. Yes, okay, I said what I had to say. So, I, I think um, it's, it's, a, it's a big crisis. Um, I agree that contact tracing is not a, an easy thing. It is necessary. Uh, we have to implement it as a tool. It's not a, an objective on its own. I agree with Mr. Viverovsky on that. Um, and we try to work out every day uh, a system that is uh, privacy preserving. Um, we need the possibility to, to adapt it uh, uh, in a continuous way. And it would be useful also to have uh, good cooperation with data protection authorities in how to do it. And it's a balance that has to be um, uh, found between uh, right to privacy and right to health. Thank you. Okay, three, three, three short commentaries from me as a kind of summary. First of all, I'm one of the persons who is the first one to download this application and to use it on my mobile. Uh, but at the same time, I'm the first one to ask, uh, is it efficient? Is it really used for the purposes it was created? Uh, what is the result of that? Uh, what are you going to do with this data? How much, how, how, uh, how the security of this data looks like? So. I'm in favor of this application, and as I said, I will be checking it myself, but with all these questions. The second the second thing which I would like to, to mention is that it's very good that Belgium is among those countries that, first of all, try to, 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 to practically work on the solutions. And for example, Professor Pernell, that was recalled by Mr. Robin, uh, was a very good example of the uh, scientist who is taking part in the development of the technological solutions uh, for the uh, contact tracing apps uh, and uh, is not taking part in any kind of uh, fake wars or artificial uh, conflicts between the scientific sci scientists, but is simply doing his job uh, in, in order to find out the technical solutions. So, so big, big hugs for uh, uh, Catholic University Leuven and for the uh, people who were working there and uh, uh, also that's very good that Belgium was not fast with introducing the applications but tried to prepare the one which will really serve the purpose so th this is one of the things which uh, I would also say as a good result that's a pity that we don't have an interoperable solution for all Europe and uh, I'm uh, not uh, very uh, well let's say I have some doubts about the future of the contact tracing apps. I am a little bit afraid that the results that will be achieved by these applications will not be satisfactory enough, uh, neither for the politicians uh, nor for the general public. And if not, the, the applications may be supplemented with additional features, uh, which I'm a little bit afraid of especially the things like immunity passports or green codes or th things like that uh, really scare me a lot uh, because they are the good way to discrimination 
And moreover, nobody know, nobody of us knows what does mean immunity uh, as far as the COVID-19 is concerned. Uh, also, the future use of the mobile apps for the M Health, while generally is a good solution, may look very differently because I think that in the second part of the year we'll have more and more push on the people to make the self tests with the applications that are the, the delivered by the governments. And the data from the self-test are uh, expected to be collected on the uh, on the central level, which definitely, as a data protection authority, I will have a lot of doubts about. Thank you very much. I will I will now enable the question mode, and so um, the people here uh, can uh, type their question in the chat if they wish so. Okay, yes. The question mode is enabled, and so please type your question. Okay, we have somebody preparing the question, so we may wait. Uh, there, there are people typing, so questions are coming. Yeah, yeah, I can see. Yes, uh, so the Belgian um, the Belgian app is being uh, developed. Uh, at this moment, based on the open source code um, of the German app, we expect that he will be available uh, in production in the beginning of September, and the DPIA will be done and will be public. I can add to that that the data protection impact assessment for the German uh, solution has been prepared not only by the government itself, but there was also the, uh, let's say, independent one, which was prepared by one of the NGOs. I, I don't remember exactly the name of the moment, uh, but there was a foundation that, was, that prepared the data protection impact assessment uh, uh, um, in, in, independently from the, uh, from the government. And there is a question for clarification. Uh, was it before or after? Yes, but uh, I, I told you that the app is not in production at this moment. It will be before that uh, the app is, is available. If you are talking about the uh, manual contact tracing, there, uh, there was a risk assessment that has been done before the law was written because it is really uh, uh, precise uh, in the law, all the databases, all the exchanges. Uh, there we didn't do a DPIA uh, because it was laid down in, in very concrete uh, uh, texts uh, in the law. Thank you. There is a new question. Yes, so... Um, Mr. Robin, do um, you believe that... Yes, this is a political question. It's not a privacy question. Um, um, I, my personal opinion is uh, that in the Belgian situation, the main problem on the political uh, level is that we don't have a division in a very homogeneous way of, of the competences. Eh? And that uh, for a lot of competences, there is a, a combined uh, responsibility and a, a combined competence of, um, on the one hand, the federal state and on the other hand, the regions. And that's not the best situation. Um, as far as the app is uh, um, as concerned, uh, there is an agreement between all regions and the federal state that it will be one app for the whole uh, of Belgium, and there is a cooperation between the regions and the federal state uh, uh, to do that. No comments from my side on the situation I, in Belgium. 
uh, where the data will be stored. Uh, I guess that you are uh, in the manual, uh, the database for the manual tracing are stored uh, at Cienciano. It's a Belgian uh, uh, public uh, health institution. Uh, for the app, uh, the data will be stored at least in the European Union. Uh, it will be a cloud uh, situation, a, 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 a protected cloud uh, situation, um, and it will be in the European Union. But again, um, uh, for the app, the only thing that we uh, store is the senseless tokens of the infected people, so it's not personal data. Okay. Yes, the, 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 the Belgian app is being built uh, based on an, uh, a public tender, and there was an independent uh, jury uh, of professors like Professor Penel that has chosen uh, the company that is building the Belgian app. Um, again, um, we uh, reuse the open source code of the German uh, app. Um, so the less uh, there are um, <coughs> adaptations uh, to it, the better it is. Thank you. Uh, no, we will not can, review this we, assessment. Uh, yes. <laughs> Uh, that that I can start to answer about Galileo. If you want, no, Galileo will not be the good way of dealing with the contract tracing generally, as any other system of this kind. Neither GPS nor Baidu or G, or, or the Russian system would not be good for that, because simply the uh, the, the GPS-like solutions uh, do not give you the precision that is uh, possible here. Moreover, they can uh, easily uh, lose the person when the person is in the high building uh, or in the dense uh, area. So generally, the location data collected uh, from this uh, uh, kind of uh, this kind of geolocation, uh, the uh, technologies are not very useful in this sense. Uh, Bluetooth uh, low energy was a good solution, was a good choice, I guess, uh, and uh, at least more efficient. So Galileo may probably play some role, but uh, but uh, I guess fortunately it has been uh, it has been dropped by the commission. The commission tried, or rather not commission, but the agency which is dealing with the, with Galileo tried to offer the solution for the European Commission, but at some point uh, this action has been stopped. So in Belgium, we will not use uh, location tracking. Eh? Okay. Well, very, very interesting question about uh, the limitations uh, of uh, apps uh, on the territory and the, in, in, and the results of that for the freedom of uh, movement. Well, I can tell you that uh, the COVID-19 crisis uh, have stolen the Europe that they had. I was born in the uh, 70s in a country which was not democratic and uh, traveling abroad was extremely difficult for me until 1990 when the changes happened in the eastern part of Europe. So I know what does it mean to be uh, uh, imprisoned in the borders of your own country. And uh, I thought, uh, even half a year ago, that I'm in a situation that it will never happen again. And with the start of the COVID and the general uh, lockdowns that the countries uh, decided about, uh, I found myself uh, as the person whose Europe has been stolen by these decisions. 
So I'm very, very fragile and very touchy on any kind of uh, uh, divisions of uh, us by the borders uh, for, for fighting with the COVID. But I have to say that uh, uh, the, the limitations for the applications uh, shall never be the, the, used as the, uh, as the reason, as the pretext for stopping the movement of the people. There might be different solutions to be done. There might be different, uh, um, different uh, um, limitations that are introduced on the member levels, but the, we rather should to, to fight that for the interoperability of the applications which exist in Europe that would allow us to send our data to the application which is operating in the, in the area we are in with the means that have been installed on our device in our own country. Um. Yeah, Mr. Robin, do you want to add to it? To it? Yes, okay. I um, Again, uh, whether an app is effective doesn't depend on technology and doesn't depend on, on the functions of the app. It depends on the trust that people have. It depends on the uh, the willingness to 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 uh, to use it. I think um, we will try to convince uh, the social partners in Belgium because it can be very useful in in companies on public transport uh, at events uh, and so on. You don't need uh, really that that uh, sixty percent of the whole population is installing the app. But uh, I think it has nothing to do with privacy protection or information security, whether it is effective or not effective. Uh, we can put in the DPIA, in the data protection impact assessment, of course, the uh, critical success factors. And we try to, to, to meet them because, uh, again, people will not, will not have trust when the app is, is, is not uh, secure and is, not, uh, uh, is, is dealing with personal data. Uh, so that's what we will, will, will describe. But nobody can give. Uh, uh, so it depends really on how you put it in, in the market, how the product uh, uh, of the app is is, is uh, evaluated uh, by the people. You see that in some countries it's 20 percent, in other countries it's two percent, uh, and in France it's barely downloaded because I, in my opinion, it's uh, it's an app that is based on a centralized uh, system. Uh, that's not the thing that other countries uh, do that are successful, like Ireland and like like Germany, and we don't do it neither. So it's a, a local, a decentralized storage of of the the senseless tokens on the smartphones of the people, and only when a person is infected, the tokens are put in a central uh, system. That's not the same in the French uh, French situation, and I think that this is one uh, of 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 the main issues for for France. And uh, yes, uh, um, in my opinion, but I will uh, let Mr. Vivorovsky uh, <laughs> take the, because it's a European question. Yes, in my opinion, in a crisis situation, it would be good that uh, you have some common uh, solutions, quick uh, common solutions uh, uh, throughout whole Europe respecting of course uh, the fundamental uh, rights but i told you already that i uh, would applaud for a, a, a system that is a pan-european uh, system at least for the countries that, that want to implement the same uh, the same technology well of course i have to agree but i'm probably not objective in this uh, uh, situation because uh, of course i think that uh, that was exactly the situation where the solution which is created on the European level might be very useful. Although, as I said, I understand that the, the, the main problem we had here was that we were starting from scratch, having the health uh, service systems, uh, which are the national ones, uh, 
and not being sure at the moment when we're starting in March, which solution will be the best one. I have to uh, remind that uh, first applications that were created in Europe, uh, e except Icelandic one, which was really very, very uh, early one, but the other ones were mainly about quarantine uh, check. So they were the law enforcement actually applications, not the applications which were used for epidemiologists for any kind of contact tracing. So it well, may have been asked before, but all okay. EU is trying to do uh, throughout the cooperation of the data protection authorities, but also throughout the work which is done by the Commission itself. Uh, and uh, to, uh, here, the, the most important uh, factor is the activity of the DigiConnect uh, that is working on this interoperability in the very technical uh, meaning. Uh, uh, between different uh, 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 different uh, players which exist in Europe. Well, uh, of course, uh, I cannot, uh, because of my position as the EDPS, uh, I cannot uh, assess uh, how the situation looks like in the countries uh, or the, to give my uh, assessment of that. Uh, I can only say that uh, it has never been easy to work on the level of the governments between the European Union member states. But on the other hand, I never seen the international organization that would have more uh, positive uh, uh, results in the cooperation between the governmental bodies. So even if this is very difficult, the EU has definitely enough experience to introduce the system which at the same time is uh, efficient and is uh, uh, keeping the, the, the values which are the most important for the European Union. And I'm saying that coming from the country which is not known at the moment uh, as a country very well preserving democratic values. Well, I, I guess the, the last question about uh, ECJ decision on the privacy shield is uh, on different subjects, so I don't know if it's good to, to mix it uh, with uh, this discussion that we have uh, here. Uh, well, of course, I'm ready to, 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 to discuss that, uh, but probably not uh, during this uh, meeting. I see other questions coming, but in the meantime, I would like to apologize for the blanks because it's due to technical problems. So I'm very sorry for that. I don't know whether it is a question to the Belgian situation or in general, uh, but uh, for the Belgian situations, as I told you already, um, the data are uh, either on a, a cloud, a private cloud system based on the Belgian territory, either for the app on a cloud-based, private cloud-based system on the European territory. So we will not uh, use a uh, US company uh, uh, to do it. Um, neither for the um, personal data, neither for the pseudonymized data, neither for the anonymous data. And if it is an, uh, uh, a US company, of course, it will be a company that, uh, for that uh, respect, um, 
has its uh, seats and uh, has, has its uh, cloud systems in Europe. Well, my, my commentary to uh, Mr. Axel Billin question, uh, I don't think uh, that uh, it's true that this data will be stored in any system which is uh, uh, which is uh, uh, the uh, American one. I never heard about the idea of collecting all the pseudonymized data from uh, uh, <clears throat> all around Europe. This is something which at least I don't know anything about. I cannot comment anything about the involvement of this very company, which is uh, meant here in in the process. Uh, at least I, I I'm not uh, a specialist in this subject. And as I uh, as you uh, as you wrote in the Belgian situation, we don't uh, use this technology in the contact tracing system. Yes, let's. I, I give you an example eh? um, for the PLF. So, because we capture is a is a system of of, of verification that you are not dealing with the robot and 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 so on. In my opinion, eh? um, for the PLF, so the personal uh, passenger locator form, where, where we need to use a, a web application for people that come back to Belgium, um, we are using a system where the people have to indicate uh, a phone number, a local phone number, and we sent an SMS with a code to this phone number that has two uh, advantages. Then we know that this is correct phone number because we need it when the people come back to Belgium to send eventually uh, an, um, an activation code for a test or a message that a person has to go in quarantine. Um, a second advantage is that we are sure that the the person, or we have a, uh, a quite uh, a sufficient level of certainty that the person uh, who is using the form, of course, is a natural person, and secondly, uh, is the holder of the of the um, um, of the phone number. So it is not used uh, in the contact tracing app but for other applications where we need a verification that is a, a natural person that is doing the job we have other techniques uh, to do it it doesn't make sense to have a real um, two-factor authentication to fill in uh, uh, something like a passenger locator form, but a lot because a lot of people will not have their electronic identity card and their reader or another uh, uh, solution. That that's why we we based it on on the sending of an SMS uh, that has to be put uh, in in order to uh, transmit uh, the electronic form. Okay, I I do not see anyone typing anymore. Um, so um, I guess that uh, no one has uh, questions anymore. 
So I would like to thank you, um, Mr. Yevierovsky and Frank Robin, to pass these two hours almost with us. Thank you very much for your presence here. And thank, thank you very you much for having me attendees. here. And thank you for the organization of this very specific and very specialized uh, uh, meeting. Uh, so I, I'm really happy as the person who was introducing IT in uh, ELSA in the 90s. Uh, I'm very happy that we go that far in the interest of the law student, uh, students in the IT solutions. Okay, and thank you also for the invitation. It was quite uh, useful, I think. Thank you very much. Thank yes. You very much. Bye. Okay, we can uh, leave. Yes, sure. Yes, okay.